magic. Dude. Fucking Spider-Man 2. Wait, I can't say that this early. It's here. I don't actually even know where to start. I've been waiting so long for any news about this game that it's actually been long enough for me to have time to start the Spider-Man retrospective series, underestimate how long it would take to make, gradually increase my production value, and then go on hiatus for five months. Two damn years of waiting. Sure, we still haven't seen anything from the Wolverine game, but I could give a damn. We finally have something for this game. More than that, we know it's coming out in the fall. So most likely the leak from Tony Todd regarding a September release date is gonna be proven true. That is two years of nothing but a single teaser telling us the villains of the game, and finally, not only do we have some gameplay, but a look at the symbiote suit, Miles and Peter's new powers, Kraven's protégés, and Kraven himself. Also, we got some interesting hints towards the story involving Harry and the symbiote. So, to start at the beginning, we see Craven just absolutely destroy a scrub. I fucking love his design here. Craven's one of the most consistent of Spidey's rogues when it comes to wardrobe. Every other character goes through massive changes between appearances, and the first game was a great example of that, with new and fresh designs for just about every major character in the game, including Spidey himself. But Craven's always been pretty much the same, with his tight pants and lion jacket. That's still present here, but the design feels very at home in this universe, with the combat jacket style making the lion design more stylized and less cartoony. Also, tangent, but can someone explain to me the skull on his shoulder? I tried to look into this element of his design, and I've literally found one TV show, one game, and one piece of art where Craven has a skull on his shoulder, so... Can someone please explain this one to me? Because it feels like it has to come from somewhere, but I cannot figure out where. And it's not just the intro that looks gorgeous. Throughout the whole showcase, we're treated to gorgeous set pieces, both interior and exterior, as well as the overall movement of the game. If this game works like the other two, then that means the showcase was running in 60 FPS mode, and the game can look even better with the ray tracing and other features in the quality preset. But even if this is performance mode, the game looks absolutely gorgeous, and will undoubtedly be a treat to play from start to finish, which of course brings us to the gameplay. Let's start with the movement. Let's be real, this is just a shorter version of my retrospective scripts. While the overall movement seems to be very similar to the other two games, of course it is, those games earn so much praise for their traversal, but they decided to step it up even further in a few ways. In the other two games, the only way to start your swing at a good speed was to point launch, but this game decided to step it up a little bit by giving you a mechanic called the Super Slingshot, launching you hundreds of meters and giving you full momentum on your next swing. I mean, I assume that's full momentum. What we see of the web swinging itself seems slightly faster than before, but not by much. The really important thing that we were all waiting for, though, is the introduction of one of Spider-Man's oldest features, his web wings. The web wings are a classic staple of the character, appearing in literally the first Spider-Man comic. They've mostly been aesthetic, and most writers-slash-artists don't even include them in the first place. They were referenced in the first game as a collectible that Peter said he was trying to use as a glider, but couldn't get them to work. Clearly, with Miles' help, he's figured it out, because because both he and Miles take to the skies completely different than before. I've been so hyped for this feature, because if you've ever played a Just Cause game, you know exactly how much fun it is to glide smoothly through a map, and getting to experience something similar in New York, weaving around buildings, going through wind tunnels, and being able to reach speeds so much more impressive than the first two games is going to be amazing. It does make sense for them to be added, though, with the inclusion of Queens and maybe even some Brooklyn in this game. We've only ever seen Queens in Ultimate Spider-Man all the way back in 2005, so getting to visit the boroughs would be amazing. As far as I'm aware, we've never been able to swing around any part of Brooklyn before, so if that's really included, that'd also be amazing. While we do see Queens directly in the gameplay, Brooklyn is also shown to be the territory of the Lizard, a secondary villain and very important part of the game's plot, it would seem. At the beginning of the trailer, we do see what's likely to be the majority of the side missions and some parts of the main story. From beginning to end, we see Black Cat in Central Park, Prowler in either the lower half of the Upper West End or in Hell's Kitchen, Wraith, the alter ego of our old friend Yuri Watanabe in the bottom of Midtown, based on the placement of what I'm pretty sure is Washington Square Park, Tombstone in Greenwich, the lizard across the Brooklyn Bridge in, you guessed it, Brooklyn, Taskmaster on the line between Brooklyn and Queens, just east of the Williamsburg Bridge, or Queensboro, look it up, and Shocker North in the residential part of Queens. We also see all of the members of Octavius' Sinister Six, as well as Kingpin, hanging out where we left them in Rikers. Finally, we do see both Spider-Men, but I thought it was interesting, 
because Peter's in Greenwich, likely because he's living in MJ's apartment there, and they were able to narrow down his location to that section of Manhattan. But later in the showcase, we see what looks to be Peter's house in Queens. I don't even think May lived there anymore, so what he was doing there will be interesting to see. Secondly, Miles is centralized in Chinatown, which is weird since last time his apartment was in Harlem. And I'm pretty sure he moved there from Brooklyn, so why is he marked in Chinatown of all places? I do think it's neat that he's almost exactly where Peter's old apartment was in the first game, so it's possible there's something there. Of course, the showcase doesn't, well, showcase any of these potential stories, instead focusing on Peter and Miles chasing down the lizard while taking out Craven's men who are doing the same thing. Which brings us to the part everyone's been unable to shut up about, for two years. That, of course, being the introduction of the symbiote to the Insomniac universe. The showcase wastes no time giving us a grand look at the new threads as he bursts from the basement of this house, whether it's his house or not. The symbiote covers his suit, solidifying into a sleek new design. I swear the camera work and pacing are entirely meant to be an homage to the opening of Web of Shadows, where he gets the symbiote in that game. The new suit looks phenomenal, with parts looking armored with a flat black sheen, but other parts of the suit looking more like pure liquid, moving and undulating across Peter's skin. It looks disgustingly great, with even the eyes rippling like they're alive. The suit looks great, but that means nothing if it doesn't make Peter look good in a fight, and dear god does it. The bottom left of the screen shows four options that seem to be essentially replacing the gadget wheel with super moves. The movement of Peter brutally slamming enemies into their own vehicles, turning into a living wave of destruction, and coolest of all, grabbing the last four enemies and taking them all out at once. It's been pretty established for a long time that Web of Shadows takes the cake as the best combat of any Spidey game, but looking at this, it might give Web of Shadows a run for its money. Speaking of which, while the first game just let you dodge around, this game seems to be taking another page out of Shava's playbook by letting you parry attacks as well, according to the PlayStation blog post. I am absolutely fucking hyped to slam people around with tendrils, and I'll be a little upset if you can only use the symbiote for like half the game. But Peter isn't the only character here, and I'm so happy to say that Miles absolutely holds his own in this game, with some new gadgets including a triple trip mine, the return of the web line that was taken out of the first game, a kind of teleport ground pound, and most importantly, a goddamn electric Hadouken. Is it Hadouken? Hadouken Sub-Zero! Sub Hadouken. There's not much more to say about Miles for now, he seems pretty similar to his own game, but the updates seem more than enough to satisfy me, as long as they don't give him a fucking electricity sword. We get this badass chase where we'll get to play as both Miles and Peter chasing after this MTV looking Kirk Connors, and it becomes very obvious how the symbiote's going to affect Peter with how he's talking to Miles and Genki, until eventually they lose Craven's men and Peter swings off on his own to track them down. So the last thing I want to talk about is a little bit of speculation on where the story's going. Clearly Craven's going to be a primary threat of the game, but the thing about the first game was that it kept us on our toes with how it handled its villains. I mean, just look at Martin Lee. Guy was on every promo item and gets taken out the first time by the end of Act 1. We already know Venom is going to be a big part of the game, but it looks like Peter gets the symbiote fairly early in the story, and even mentions that Harry's dying and only Connors can save him. So here's my pitch for where the story is going to go. Act 1 will see Kraven staging his hunt on the spiders, potentially even leading to the creation of the lizard somehow, and while Peter's overwhelmed with that, his old friend Harry shows up, taken over by the symbiote, and Peter and Miles manage to take Harry out, but Peter's fatally wounded. Harry will give the symbiote to Peter to save his life, and Peter will use it to try and get Connors the way we see in the showcase, so that he can save Harry. Act 1 will culminate in Peter managing to get Connors and deciding to take out Craven by any means necessary. Act 2 will go through Peter descending further and further while Miles tries to reason with him. Eventually, Peter will take out Craven at the end of Act 2, with Miles having to stop Peter from killing Craven, and Peter giving up the symbiote so that he doesn't go that far. Finally, Act 3 will see Craven, one way or another, getting his hands on the symbiote and becoming the true Venom that we're gonna have to fight as the final boss. Let's be honest, I'm leaving plenty of room, but if I'm at least 60% right on that shit, I'll take it as a win. That's just about all I have to say about this showcase. I am super hyped for this game. I've been absolutely itching to get my hands on it, and I will absolutely be playing the shit out of it as soon as I can. I know I've been on hiatus for a few months now, but I have been streaming regularly on the Pocket Monster Live channel, linked down below. I am going to be using a few of those streams and turning them into videos to put here on the main channel. Not to mention, I'm still working on the next installment of the Year of the Spider, though with my current availability, I make no promises of it coming out anytime soon. If you want to be the first to see it, though, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. Jeez, I sound like a tool. I'm really excited to keep putting out content for you guys, and I hope you guys are just as excited to see it. For now, be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.